So you've been on a carnival diet for a few months and unfortunately you cannot call yourself a success story. You feel that you are stalling or your progress is very slow and yet you are doing everything right. So what could be the reason? Well, today I will share with you three hidden causes of why you may be stalling or not progressing on your carnivore journey. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sylvia. I'm a carnivore coach and let's get started with today's video. First things first, I do believe that diet is at the center of your health or your illness. But there are external factors that will affect your health too and unfortunately diet will not fix it. So let's start with number one. And the first one on my list are root canals. Yeah, the very common dental procedure. There are about 25 million of them put into people's mouth every year in the United States. So very common, uh, considered safe, um, very practical uh, procedure, not very expensive. What happens is when you have a infected tooth, basically the main nerve, uh, the dentist will drill into that nerve, remove the nerve, put medication in there, then seal it up and then put a crown over it and that's your root canal. Now you are walking away with a good looking tooth, you have something to grind your food with, but there is a problem. 70% of the root canals get infected. And let me tell you how this happens. Aside from the main nerve, there are about 70,000 microscopic nerves that are running through the pulp of the tooth. And when you cut off the blood supply, which is what happens when you remove the main nerves, those canals start decaying and there is a bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, that starts multiplying like crazy and producing its own toxins. And then so when you are grinding food with your tooth, you are pushing down that bacteria and its toxins and it starts being picked up by the lymphatic system and it can travel other places to your body. Things like your heart. Actually, I learned that from a dentist who visited my networking group and she said that more and more surgeons, heart surgeons, will send their patients first to the dentist to make sure that they don't have infected teeth because that very same bacteria can cause problems in the heart. And this is exactly what happened to me over the span of like about 15 years. I had uh, eight root canals all in the molars and every single of my molars got infected. Now there are very expensive scans. They cost about a thousand dollars that can tell you whether your root canal is infected or not. But I had so many telltale signs that that was the case that I didn't opt for that. I just bit the bullet and said, let's remove them all. And let me tell you this, this was a quite a project because I had three of them in a row over here and over here. And <laughs> when they got removed, it looked like a massive wound that had about 30 stitches. So no, it wasn't a pleasant procedure, but yes, it had to be done. Now what's important when you have your root canals removed is that the dentist also drills deeper into your bone to remove all that decayed tissue that is surrounding the root canal tooth. My symptoms were many, so the gums were very tender where I had my root canals. Each time I brushed my teeth, so twice a day, I was spitting out a teaspoon of blood. Uh, each time I pressed on my gums, there was an unpleasant sensation. I would wake up at night uh, with this almost a feverish feeling in my gums. And then eventually, uh, on the side of the gums, I developed cysts. Sometimes there was blood oozing out of it, or sometimes it was this yellow pus. Let me tell you this, this was disgusting and extremely uncomfortable. It wasn't like a pain pain that you couldn't sleep at night, but it was making me so uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep. I was waking up at night. I was feeling feverish. And when I went back to the conventional dentist, what it was done to my teeth was just to open up the root canal, clean that the main nerves, seal it back up and put the crown over. And then that would not work not for more than two weeks and I was back to the same problems with cysts, swelling and waking up at night. And so finally I found a biologic 
dentist who understood the problems I had and then I went with their program and then I decided to replace my root canals with a zirconia implants and let me tell you this this is a super expensive procedure so if you can avoid root canals both for the health reasons and for the pocket reasons do it it's not a pleasant journey and it costs lots of money but it had to be done in my case it was a absolute and unmitigated disaster and it got a lot worse when I was pregnant. My bleeding gums were through the roof and even though my rheumatoid arthritis went into a remission when I was pregnant I was still showing inflammation markers in my blood and I was convinced that it was coming from my infected teeth. The best way to deal with root canals that are infected is to find a biologic dentist that understands that the root canals can get infected and cause lots of trouble. Conventional doctors are not trained to think in those terms. And what is really important once you have your root canal removed is that the tissue around the uh, tooth is also removed. Like literally, the dentist has to drill into your jaw to remove that a millimeter of infected tissue that will be surrounding the tooth. It is really important because that tissue, if left there, can also cause infection and uh, raise your inflammation markers. Now, if you just have a cavity, I would also recommend to go to a biologic doctor because they're also trained. Even if the cavity is really close to the main nerve, they're trained to drill around that nerve to preserve that nerve so they will not jump into the root canal right away. So do explore that before you decide for root canals. I do have a video that focuses only on root canals, how I went about it and what your alternatives are for root canals. I will link it in the description box. Check it out. I think it is a really useful video. All right, number two on my list are breast implants. So this applies to the ladies, but breast implants by our body will be also treated as a foreign object and your body will fight them. Now, conventionally, breast implants are considered also a safe procedure. However, so many women have been suffering from the problems that breast implants cause that they, they themselves coined a term breast implant in illness. And it became so popular in many um, social media groups that are discussing this issue that actually uh, industry started studying it. There were actually study uh, carried out to address breast implant uh, illness. But interestingly, it, the name wasn't coined by the researchers. It was coined by the women that were dealing with the effects of having breast implants. So similarly to the root canals, breast implants are uh, reported to cause brain fog, inability to concentrate, lack of motivation, uh, all kind of autoimmune disorders. Uh, some women complain about not being able to get pregnant. They remove their breast implants and they get pregnant right away. Uh, fibromyalgia is also blamed on um, breast implants. And what's important to, kn to note is that all of this being uh, reported and combined into the breast implant illness by the women themselves. The studies that confirmed it happened thereafter. I don't have a personal experience with breast implants, but I do have a, a close friend that does. And by all objective measures, she is very tuned in into healthy lifestyle, diet, she does everything right. And yet at some point she started uh, experiencing uh, fatigue, mental fog, um, lack of motivation. And then she was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. And then her, she herself started exploring what the cause could be and that led her to explore the implant issue and she joined a Facebook group. Uh, this is a really massive group and if you're interested in it I will link it in the description box. Check it out. The information about what implants can cause and how women recovered from it is quite incredible. The most common theme that I got from reading their posts and experiences is that basically after a few years of having breast implants they were feeling like they were dying and they just had to do something 
desperately uh, to reverse that feeling, that experience of just being ill all the time. So the common sense solution to having a foreign object on your chest is to do uh, explant uh, surgery and there is a growing numbers of surgeons that specialize just in that removing breast implants and again the same principle around the implants there will be a tissue that has to be also removed because if it's left it will continue causing problems such as increasing inflammation causing fatigue uh, and being a culprit in many other chronic uh, problems so you know, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So as a carnival coach, my first reaction when I heard the IBS diagnosis was, well, why don't you try the carnival diet? But it wouldn't matter because the main cause would not be reversed by the diet. She could have had a perfect diet, the most perfect carnival diet that there is. And as long as the implants were there, it wouldn't change much. And finally, one last point on implants, and that is a message from my friend. She said that after 12 years of dealing with implants, she wouldn't do it them ever again, and she would not recommend them to anyone for any reason. So if you are one of these people that has implants, decided to jump into a carnival diet, it's been a few months and things are not working out the way you were expecting, Maybe you have to have a look at that. And number three, toxic chemicals in our everyday care products. Yeah, that's another one that we don't think much about and we use them every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And these things have problems. There are about 88 chemicals used by 595 uh, companies that produce cosmetics reported since 2009. And a lot of them have been linked to cancer and hormonal disruptions. But they are in everyday products that we use. And the unfortunate reality is if you are on the budget or cost conscious that the cheapest of the cosmetics are the highest one in those dangerous chemicals. And I mean things like parabens, mercury, aluminum, oftentimes in the deodorant. Uh, formaldehyde, paraformaldehyde, uh, and the list goes on. Um, I will make Friday findings dedicated more to the chemicals in the personal care products, so wait for that video. Just remember, there are so many chemicals in our cosmetics that can disrupt our hormones or are linked to causing cancers. But the good news is that the consumer awareness about the toxins in our everyday care products is increasing. So many companies uh, that just a few years ago would put parabens into their uh, shampoos or creams, now they're advertising that this is a parabens-free product. Also, there are more and more new companies that are coming up on the market with products that are completely toxins-free. And I'm not an expert in cosmetics, but one place you can go to to help you uh, with finding right products for you is Environmental Working Group. I will link their website in the description box. They also have an application. You can download it to your phone and literally while you are shopping for shampoo or cream or a lotion, you can scan the barcode and it will tell you how good and clean that uh, product is. All right, and let me share with you one more scary statistic and that is women's makeup. So if you do full-blown makeup such as foundation, primers, blushes and eyeshadows and lipstick, it is estimated that you will put over 300 different chemicals on your face. Now that is quite scary. Now, disclaimer, do not take any makeup advice from me because I'm really bad at it. I don't know how to wear a lipstick. If I put some on, it will end up on my teeth and I will eat it real quickly and I just can't stand foundation. So all I do is that eyeshadow and some mascara when I have to record the videos and that's about it. I just want to make sure that you don't get any inspiration about makeup from me because I am terribly bad at it and uninterested. All I'm discussing is the aspect of health of the makeup. 
So let's say you are sensitive to gluten, but did you know there's lots of gluten put into women's lipsticks? So you might be on a clean carnivore diet and you're still reacting as if you ate gluten. Well, maybe it's your lipstick you just didn't know about it. All right, so these are my top three factors that have nothing to do with the diet and yet they can sabotage or stall your progress on your carnivore journey or any other good diet for that matter. I'm sure you can think of some other factors relevant to your health but have nothing to do with the diet. Let me know in the comments below and if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that notification bell and I will see you in my next video. Bye.